Starting now. Here we go. Which number one? We're gonna blow through a few of these. Number one. What information do you need to know in order to determine whether a chemical reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous? G, but what do you need to know to find G? H and S and and T. And T, thanks, Kennedy. I'm going to let you define Gibbs free energy. That's in your book at home. Um, also, number three you can do. Number four. Now, number four, when they say it's positive, it's more disordered. If it's negative, it's less disorder going that direction. So, let's look at the 4A and then you can do the rest of them. I'm going from gas to gas to gas to gas. All right, so that doesn't help us, does it? So what do we need to look at? Moles. Moles. So is it more? More. Yeah. Because you're going from two moles in the first half to three in the second half. So more disorder. Somebody tell me B. Why? <coughs> Goes to a solid from. AQ means it's in dissolved in water. <clears throat> How about C? Why? Liquid gas. Uh-oh. Now, how about D? Why? Two and three moles. All right. Now, Number five, we're going to do this one together, or not together, but I'm going to let you work on it. <clears throat> At 25 degrees C, the delta H is negative 76 kilojoules, and the delta S is negative 117 joules per K. What do we got to do here? Okay, change Celsius to Kelvin. How do we do that? Add 273, so it's going to be 298. Don't forget your units. Somebody asked last hour. You've got to include units, especially in your answer, because I'll mark it partially wrong if you don't get it. How about H and S? Anything we got to do there? Any issues with units? Delta H to joules. So negative six seventy six kilojoules is seventy six thousand. Very good. Joules. Now, I want you to solve it, and I'll hit the pause button here a second. Okay. So we figured out delta G. <laughs> and I'll just fill in the numbers real quick here for works now guys and girls don't forget to cancel things. So you look here, we got Kelvin, Kelvin, cancel. So our units are left are just joules. Now, is the reaction spontaneous or not spontaneous? It's spontaneous because it's negative. All right. Moving along. Number six, there's two parts to number six here. If you figure out the answer for th the answer for this, do you need to calculate this to answer the next two questions? Well, think about it. Guys, please listen. 
This may save you work on a... Now, if you figure out delta G for zero, do you need to figure out delta G for 75 degrees to answer these questions down here? No. So, what I want you to do right now is do number six for T equals zero degrees C. So your assignment right now, and I'll give you about five minutes, is to do this one. Hit the record. Delta G equals 11,000 joules, because you had to convert that, minus the quantity of 273K, because you had 273 to the temperature, and times 41 joules per Kelvin. Kelvin's cancel. And you come up with that. Now, temperature went up. Is it going to change the sign of our answer if we go to 75 degrees? Because it's just going to get more negative, right? Because this term keeps getting larger, so it doesn't change the spontaneity of the equation. Plus, from yesterday, that little table you made says the higher the temperature, the more spontaneous. All right. Now, back table can't answer this. <laughs> Neither can you guys because you were listening to them. Is this an exothermic or endothermic reaction? Endo. Endo comes the hard question. Why? Because delta H is because delta H is positive for this equation. If it's endothermic, is energy being released or absorbed? Absorbed. Now, what's delta S tell you about the disorder? What's the delta S tell you about the disorder? Increasing because it's positive. Now, yes. So you look at delta H for the both things in B. You look at delta H for whether it's endothermic or exothermic, which then tells you whether energy is being released or absorbed. Delta S tells you disorder. Delta G tells you spontaneity. All right. Now. Moving on to Hess's law. These are not any harder. They're just a little more complex. So, no. You just got to be able to recognize. So, number one, guys, 1B or B1. I'm going to do B1 and you're going to do B2. So, we're going to go through this. Ignore this stuff right there. That's just a typo. All right. Now. N2H4 is on the right side in our target equation. Where is it in our first equation below? So how do you fix that? You gotta move it. How do you move it? Flip the whole equation. Whatever you do, you got to flip the whole equation. Do we need to change that equation anyway? No. No, because it, they're only asking us for one, two, one up here, and we got one down here. So, but that does change our delta H, doesn't it? Very good, Bell. It makes it positive. This is the more complex stuff to understand from this group. Now, but that also took care of our N2 that we need up here right and it took care of the n2h4 but it hasn't taken care of our hydrogen so now because it's not in this equation there's no hydrogen in this equation hydrogens in the next equation now how many hydrogens do we need in our target how many are in our next 
working equation. One. So we got to double this. We don't have to flip anything around because the hydrogen's on the correct side of the the question or the equation. We don't have to mess with our delta H. Now we have to double it. So what's double 285.8? 571.6. Now let's go through and cancel stuff out. Now we have our two hydrogens that we need in our target. Oh, and I forgot to double that. There we go. So let's go here. Oh, that's negative two. Yep. So we got two, two waters on the left. Do we have two otters on the right to cancel them out? We have an oxygen on the left or on the right. Do we have one on the left? Yes, get rid of those. So we are left what we need to do. And the last thing you have to do the math. 622.2 minus 571.6 is What is it? 50.6 kilojoules. Don't forget the units. All right. It's your turn now. Do number two. Happy. You're on the air. Do I have to do anything to the first equation? Yeah. What do I got to do? All right. So we got 2N2 plus 2O2 plus 4NO. Everything's on the correct side, right? Yeah. And our delta H doubles to 361.2, correct? Yeah. All right. Next. Kennedy. Yes. What do we got to do to our second equation? Um, we switch it and times it by 2. Switch it and times it by 2. So we got 4... NH3 plus 2N2 plus 6H2. Now, Kennedy, we're not done with you. What about your delta H? What about your delta H? Oh, I didn't find that out until the end. Okay, we've... Wait, wait, I got it. What is it? 183.6? And it is positive because we flipped the equation around. Now, let's go with who should I pick this time? Naomi, do we have to do anything to the third equation? Shh, guys, yes. We got to multiply it by three. So, we got 6 H2s plus 3 O2s goes to make 6 H2O. Now, does somebody want to... Okay, guys, somebody want to triple 493.7 for me, negative... 181.1. Okay, now, everybody, do we need our N2s, or can they cancel? Cancel, cancel. How about our O2s? How many do we need? Do we have five? Yes. And we got our four NOs, correct? Yes. Do we need the four NH3s? No. Yes. Now, do we need the H2s? Can we get rid of them? One here, one there, and we got our waters. Now, what is our final answer? Negative 936.3 kilojoules. Guys, so 
The amount of jabbering may mean that you guys could be ready for the test tomorrow, right? So you need to listen. I'm going to change to this and this. Our y-axis is energy. And I'm going to draw this one. And I'm going to draw this one. Now, which, oh, you can't see. Why? <laughs> oh, that hurts, Kennedy. Okay. Which one is which? Which one is which? Left is endo. Hannah. Hannah says that EXO is on the left. I'm just guessing. She is correct, but now somebody has to tell me why. Because if this is where my reactants start, right, we're always going forward, left to right, and my products end up over here, what did we have to do to get, lose energy here? So, it went up, it lost energy, and my products have less energy. So now, this must mean this is endothermic, Wait, right? Have to label the and we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. My reactants start low and high and what we're gonna do now is go back to a former presentation and you guys all should have this <coughs> um, right is it this one here right here all right now everybody as I said, I am publishing this notebook for you as soon as class is over. And somebody made the point last time that there were more arrows on the quiz. What arrows got added were this. Let me change colors. Well, that's that's where you got to. It's going to be. You're going to have this. You're going to have this thing here. They're going to have labeled A, B, C all over the different parts. And then it'll say which one is the total energy of the reactants. Which one's total energy of the products. So, listen carefully. From here to down to the bottom is the energy of the reactants. That seems obvious, doesn't it? So, from here down to the bottom of here is the energy of the products. From here all the way down, the total energy. Very good. Now, what they're going to do on the test is they will give you one of these two. And the last question will be, which is it, endo or exothermic? All right. So, let's go back to the problems for today. Yep. Okay. Next. Okay, guys, we're almost done. Somebody tell me the heat equation. Q. All right. Now, let's read this problem, and I'm going to have you do it. It's going to involve some algebra. You're going to have to bring yourself back to algebra one. The temperature of a 74 gram sample, what variable is that? M. Increases from 15 to 45 degrees C. What is that? The delta T. Delta T. When it absorbs 2,000 joules of heat or energy, what is that? Q or C? Q, thank you, Anna. 
because they ask us what the specific heat of the material is, C. All right? They're going to ask you what C is. So, now, who can I pick on? Let's see. Who, who, who? Now, now, on these, you see. Still, you see. All right? The difference is delta means difference. Now, can somebody rearrange this equation to solve for C without putting numbers in for me? Is this correct according to, this is what Hannah says yeah. to do. Yeah. All right, now, important piece on the test, show your units. So you got 2,000 joules, correct? In the final answer you will. But if you do it while you're doing it, it'll make it easy. <laughs> What's our temperature change? 30 degrees C. Now, this is an interesting case. Do any of the units cancel out in this problem? So your units are going to be joules per gram Celsius. Now somebody give me the number for that. to three places. Nope. Nope. What'd you get? Zero point nine. Because it goes zero zero, right? This is two thousand divided by seventy four times. Oh, that's what I Okay. Remember, do your order of operations. Don't just stick it into your calculator because if you do 2,000 divided by 74 times 30, it will throw your answer way off. Now, the importance of showing work is if you got this far, you get two-thirds of the points. But if you screw this up, then... Is it going to be multiple choice and paper or just paper? Paper with all the problems is on Friday. So on Thursday. <laughs> now, I want you to do number two. And then we got another difficult one to do. Not so much. So I'm going to put on number two here. This is a Q equals MC delta T. It's a straightforward plug and chug. So you got five grams, if you're doing this correctly times 0 0.129 joules per gram Celsius times, what's the delta T? 25C. Now, what units can we cancel out? Grams and Celsius, that leaves us with the correct units. And what did you guys get? 16 point what? One, two, five. Now, you can check this very quickly by just looking at five times 25 is 125 times 0.129 is going to be roughly, you should be in that vicinity. Now, the next one is more work. Not more complicated, but more work. So, it says, and you've done this, you've done this in your in the lab. It says the above relate reaction right here took place. If four grams of zinc was added to some hydrochloric acid in a calorimeter, and the temperature of the mixture went from 20 to 26, what is delta H in kilojoules per mole? This is important. You gotta have the right units when you're done. Assume the specific heat of the mixture is 4.18 joules grams per degree Celsius and the mass of the mixture was 235. Now, look on the board. 
Find me equation for delta H. Q over the number of moles. Now, we know how to find Q, right? It's M C delta T. And here's your C, here's your M, and here's your delta T. So, I want you to start working it out. At least get Q done first, and then we'll ask you how to figure out number of moles. Okay, so Q should be 235 <laughs> times 4.18. Whoop. Joules per gram Celsius times, what's your delta T? 6C. All right. Now, and what did you guys get? 5,893 joules. All right, that'll come back on in a second. Point eight. Point 0.8 joules. Now, how do we figure the number of moles of hydrochloric acid? That's our main goal. All right, number of moles is basically the grams divided by the molar mass of our substance. All right, so number of moles is equal to, what's our number, 235? Grams of HCl, that's what we're going to use. Well, we're using the mixture, so we're going to count it as the whole. So, what is the molar mass of HCl? But the whole, the whole thing together. Okay, what's the molar mass of HCl? Uh, no. Nope. Don't guess. I want rounded one decimal place. Thirty-six point five. Somebody do the math. Two thirty-five divided by thirty-six point five grams. We're having a little controversy up here, and we'll talk about that in a second. Which six point four. Now, how do we find delta H? 5893.8 joules divided by 6.4 moles equals what? What'd you get? We got nine what? 920.9? I'm going to assume it's a...